This video is brought to you by the Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 35,000 photographers and find equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like us. Welcome back everyone. In this week's video, I'm gonna break down for you how I captured this really cool image of golfer Kyle Haynes with his dad and my really good friend, uh, Jeff Haynes. His Instagram is Jeff Haynes Media if you wanna check it out. He and I have been really good friends for about the last 20 or so years and he's a fantastic sports photographer. In fact, we used to shoot uh, professional sports uh, for different news agencies against each other and then we ended up doing it together on the same team. So that just sort of gives you a little bit of background. And I've known Kyle actually since he was, I don't know, maybe I met him when he was six or so the first time. So that's something cool to see as well. So Jeff came up with an inspiration image or he found an inspiration image that showed a golfer doing their full swing, uh, but there were streaks of light coming off the golf club and he figured out pretty quickly that that was from LED lights. So he ended up finding these LED lights online and purchased them and then attached them to the golf club. And I'll put a link below to the lights and all of the gear that we're gonna use in this video today so you can check those out. And if you click on the links, that will actually help support me a little bit as I'm making uh, these videos. So uh, that would be appreciated. Also, if you could like and subscribe and sign up for the bell and all of that good stuff too, I would appreciate that as well. So let's start talking about the lighting. So Jeff showed me the inspiration image and it had very hard light. And that makes sense because normally when you're doing uh, lighting for a sports portrait, usually that light is fairly hard. It just sort of adds to the drama of the situation and makes things a little more contrasty and more interesting. And so um, that's why I think they went with hard light and that's why we went with hard light. The other cool thing or good thing about using hard light is that you're going to isolate that light just on the subject and it's not going to bounce all around the room, which could fill in your shadows, or in this case, it could have lit up the background because we're gonna be using a nine foot paper backdrop. And if you know anything about paper backdrops that are supposedly black, they're really not black. They're just really, really, really dark gray. And if you light them up, then it's not going to give you that full black look that you're going for. So for the main light, we decided to go with a Parabolix 35D. This is a focusable parabolic reflector and we had it in the spot position. Now you don't need to use one of these fancy modifiers. It's just something that I had laying around. Well, not laying around, but it's always on the light stand in my studio. So I grabbed it and we used it. You could just use a grid reflector with a 20 or so degree grid on it. The main point here is that you're going to want it sort of off to the side coming in there at a 45 degree angle. That way you'll get good light on the subject. You'll get some shadows, um, which we're going to edge out a little bit later. And you'll also keep that light isolated on the subject. The next thing we did was we added a Bowens 200 millimeter Fresnel. We placed that directly opposite of the Parabolics 35D. I put it back there so we would create some really great edge lighting and sort of separate Kyle uh, from the background and that would just add to the drama. I had hoped that it would illuminate the shaft on his golf club as well and sort of give us some nice rim lighting there too. Then down on the floor we used two lights with blue gels and grid reflectors and I placed them down there on sandbags and pointed them up at Kyle. Now there was one mistake that I made with the place of these lights or the control of these lights, but I'll follow up with that a little bit later. I'm sure you've heard me mention the nonprofit Professional Photographers of America before and all of the incredible resources that they offer. But today I want to highlight one vital resource for every photographer who wants to make a living doing what they love to do, and that's PPA's Bridge the Gap curriculum. On top of the 900 plus online educational videos that you'll get when you join, this personalized curriculum helps photographers get the information that they need to fill in the gap between being a phenomenal creative and a successful entrepreneur. This curriculum will help you get into a business mindset. You'll learn how to attract the right clients for your business, take control of your sales process and your personal branding, plus market more efficiently. Make sure to follow the link in the description to learn more and to get a special discount on your membership. That way you can join over 35,000 other photographers looking to level up 
their business. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is our exposure. I ended up shooting this photo at two seconds. We did some experimentation and we shot sometimes uh, a little faster, maybe in that one second range, if you will. And we found that that wasn't long enough to record the entire swing of the golf club. And then later we shot at about three seconds. And what would happen is that on the follow through at the very end, he would swing the club around and then his wrist would shake a little bit. And that would make some really weird light streaks um, that occurred there. We ended up shooting at F5.6 in order to get some depth of field and ISO 400. And the most important part of this situation is that we were using rear curtain sync. And what that means is, is that the flash was told to fire at the end of the exposure. That way we would be freezing Kyle there at the very end of his movement. And that was very important. Now, one of the things that we realized fairly quickly was that that nine foot paper backdrop was just not going to be big enough. And so what I ended up doing was adding a V-flat world V-flat to each side of the set. And that made it so that the full sort of swing of the club and all of the lights was recorded mostly against a black surface. It would have been better if I had eight foot pieces of black foam board, but that's not what I had. And also it would have been better maybe if I just had a wall of black fabric. But you know, you go to war with the army you have, not the army you want. So if you have a lot of black fabric laying around, do that. Make a 15 foot wide backdrop. You'll be in much better shape. But you might just have to make do with what you have. And that's what we ended up doing in this situation. Now, one of the things that was a problem right away was that there was light escaping between the drapes and the wall, and that light was getting onto the background. Now, it was extremely dark in the studio. In fact, I was shooting at 25,000 ISO, 1 30th of a second at F2, in order to record this video clip. So you can just imagine how dim that light was that was escaping uh, from the window area and getting onto the backdrop. So what I did to prevent that from happening was to take grip arms and a boom arm and sort of push them or use them to push the drapes into the window sills in order to fully block out the light. And that got our room to be a lot blacker overall. And that allowed us to record the image because without having those um, that light pinched off, what was happening was is that light was hitting the background and that was washing out our colors. And speaking of colors, we kind of realized that maybe there weren't enough lights on the golf clubs because one problem that we were running into, we used two different clubs. One problem that we were running into was that the shaft was black and therefore it really didn't stand out against the background. And I'd hoped that that light that I put back there with the Bowens 200 millimeter Fresnel would sort of light up the shaft. Um, it did end up happening a little bit on the final image that we captured, but um, it wasn't ideal. And so a chrome shaft would have looked a lot better. I don't know if it's really chrome, but you know, shiny light colored metal, let's go with that, would have been uh, better as far as I'm concerned. So um, it might require more Photoshop in the end, but at least having that separation from the background and making it very clear what's happening, I think would have been um, a better choice overall. We also experimented with him rotating the shaft, and we also ended up at the very end taking all the LEDs that we could find and getting them onto the club, but not putting them so far up the shaft that those light beams would have intersected with his face. That was something we had to look out for. So we couldn't go too high. Um, we had to go just high enough. And I like the amount of lights that we ended up with in the final image. The other thing to think about when you're photographing golfers is that you don't really want the hands behind the head. I would like them to be less behind the head than what I'm seeing right now. Normally, I feel like in this sort of what we would call in sports photography, a neck and steel shot that you would wanna see both of the hands and the club head. So, um, You know, maybe ideally we might have rotated our position a few degrees to shoot it more from the side, but you know, it's sort of um, where we ended up. 
You know, if I could do it over again, maybe I would use that brighter colored shaft and maybe I would change the position um, slightly so we were getting more of the wraparound from the side. But this is where we ended up. The other thing we had to be cautious of was getting reflections in Kyle's glasses. So we would have him look at different points around the room just to make sure that that main light wasn't reflecting back into the camera as it bounced off of his glasses. And now finally, I wanna talk about the retouching process. So I decided to take this image into Photoshop and make every part of the backdrop that I could black. And so I oftentimes was using a black paintbrush with a really hard edge in order to make that happen. And I was also using the clone tool with a hard edge to sort of get in there around the club shaft and take those batteries out. Now we did have clear lights and we also had these other ones that were sort of in these bar things. Those clear balls probably would be a better choice if you had a um, light chrome, um, I, I don't know what the material is, but if you had a shiny shaft that was light colored and not a shiny black shaft, those clear lights would probably be a better choice. And then you would just need to probably Photoshop out the tape that you were using, using some uh, clear tape as well. So that is something to think about. Another thing that I did was I used a paintbrush, a fairly hard paintbrush with and maybe about a 50% hardness, let's say, uh, with black. And I ended up painting over the beginning parts of the light streaks. And I did that because I didn't want it to look like the club wasn't in motion when the shutter opened. I wanted to get that feeling that this image was started or began to be created after the club was just slightly in motion. And I didn't want that sort of wobble that occurred down there with the streaks. I wanted everything to be nice and smooth. Now, remember earlier when I said that I made a little bit of a mistake with those blue lights. So what I ended up doing was not only separating him from the background or separating his pants from the background, I also ended up lighting up the floor. Now I could have just tilted those lights up or used a grid or maybe a barn door or something like that to keep the light off the floor. I didn't really need to worry about the light hitting his shoes because they were always going to stand out because they were white and on a black background. So what ended up happening was where the light streaks from the club overlapped the bluish floor, they changed color temperature. And so in order to make everything look correct, I had to select that area of the streaks and then change the white balance on those particular um, other color balance in Photoshop. I had to do that in order to make them blend in with the other streaks. Now, if you come down here on the floor, you'll notice that there is some ghosting that occurred from his shoes. And that's because they were frozen in time sort of at the beginning of the exposure where the club was down there near his shoes as he stood over the ball. And so I left those in the final image because I think it looks kind of cool. And then of course, as he followed through, with his swing and stopped. The flash went off from the rear curtain sink and that froze everything in time or it froze the end position in time in our final two second long exposure. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and really what I would hope is that you would wanna try this out uh, yourself. If you don't have a studio that you could black out, you could shoot this outdoors. Just know that street lamps are not gonna be your friend. You're gonna want a very, very dark environment because any light sources are going to come in there and contaminate the shot. And I think you could use this general idea for any type of photography. You don't need to do it for sports photos. You could do it for dance or anything that involves movement and it could look really cool. Plus it's a lot of fun just to mix colored continuous light and flash. And it's something that I'm gonna wanna explore a little bit more. Remember to click on the link in the description to save $25 on your PPA membership. If you have any questions or comments, just leave those below. And as always, stay safe, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.